Cześć, witajcie serdecznie. Dzisiaj zapowiadane wywiady z fankami Richarda Ramireza. Pierwsza Christine Blondynka, druga Ewa z ciemnymi włosami. To będą fragmenty dwóch programów i pierwszym Christine właśnie będzie występować z taką inną czarną fanką, natomiast ona będzie ta druga od Menendeza. To podobno Netflix przygotowuje serial na temat braci Menendez, także no, no nie, nie, nie udało się wyciąć tylko Christine, dlatego tak wstępnie mówię o co tam chodzi z tą drugą. Natomiast no, o co chodzi z tymi fankami Richarda, bo już wcześniej robiłam odcinek o tej żonie Richarda, tu nagle jakaś druga, która jest zaręczona z nimi, o co chodzi? No otóż Richard, kiedy trafił do więzienia, no, przydzielono mu adwokatów. I no, ci adwokaci z nim działali, próbowali dla niego wywalczyć jak najłagodniejszy wyrok kary. To może wydawać, no jak to przecież, to było oczywiste, że on jest winny. Jak to może być, że adwokaci jakby z nim działają, dzięki nim. No ale no, trzeba tutaj no niestety się pozbyć jakichkolwiek złudzeń. Oczywiście są wyjątki, natomiast no, adwokaci też działają jakby w swoim imieniu, patrzą na siebie i... No adwokaci też walczą o swój prestiż, o swoje jakby wiecie, no to żeby być jak najbardziej skutecznym, jeżeli oni dla takiego typu mordercy wywalczą jak najłagodniejszy, najłagodniejszy wyrok kary, no to tym samym podnoszą swój prestiż, swoją skuteczność w oczach ludzi i chcą po prostu być jak najbardziej wzięci, no natomiast no dlatego trzeba tutaj brać poprawkę na to, że oni starali się mu pomóc, Richardowi ci adwokaci, zresztą to też w książce i będzie konkurs na książkę w shorcie, w filmie short, także zapraszam, jeżeli ktoś się interesuje Richardem do wzięcia udziału. Natomiast no, oni działali w jego imieniu, chcieli mu wywalczyć jak najłagodniejszy wyrok kary. I trzeba pamiętać, że no, Richard był psychopatą, jego nie interesował związek oparty na takiej sferze romantycznej, na, na jakimś wsparciu, wspieraniu się, na jakiejś takiej szczerości prawdziwej więzi. No jego to nie interesowało, ponieważ no nie tylko był psychopatą, ale i sadystą. Więc no i on z adwokatami postanowił wykorzystać ten potencjał, jaki zobaczyli w tej rzeszy kobiet, która była zakochana w Richardzie. I te kobiety, no niestety, służyły im jako takie pionki. Pionki do różnych rzeczy. Te kobiety mu zdjęcia wysyłały, pieniądze mu wysyłały. No, no to były po prostu czysto takie interesowne korzyści. No oprócz oczywiście tego, że już samo to, że tyle rzeszy kobiet było nim zainteresowanych, no to jemu to ego podbudowywało. Jak Richard trafił do więzienia, no to miał tam jakiś określony grafik wizyt. No i też y, limitowana liczba osób mogła go odwiedzać, więc te kobiety w rzesze setek ustawiały się w kolejce, jak najwcześniej wstawały, czasami spały w samochodach, y, żeby po prostu się załapać na kolejkę. I to wyglądało tak, że te kobiety kłóciły się między sobą, tam dochodziło do różnych zamieszek, więc no, przeniesiono Richarda do innego więzienia, tam jest właśnie też mowa przez te właśnie kłótnie. No i Richard z adwokatami postanowili, że te kobiety mogą się do czegoś przydać. I taka Christine, która dla niej to było jak najbardziej na rękę, żeby się tutaj promować swoją osobę, występować w różnych programach. No i ona była tym samym taką żywą reklamą, obrączynią Richarda, która w mediach opowiadała, nie, on jest niewinny, ja mu wierzę i tak dalej. Wydawać by się mogło, że no... Co za głupie te kobiety, tak, zakochały się w jakimś brutalnym mordercy występują, jakby narażają swój wizerunek na, na taką te, tego typu opinię. No natomiast z drugiej strony, jakby na to spojrzeć, to jeżeli tak jak Krystyna, która miała wolny zawód, przedstawiała się jako pisarka, no to tak sobie można pomyśleć, że tym samym nie była narażona na, na nie wiem, na zwolnienie, na jakieś restrykcje w pracy, a, a jeszcze bardziej to dla niej na dobra działało, ponieważ jeżeli była pisarką, no to tym samym była bardziej znana. Napędzała sobie jakby czytelników, bo, bo ludzie byli zainteresowani, co ona w tych książkach pisze, czy tam nie wiem, co ona tam pisała. I przecież ona za udział w tych programach brała pieniądze, więc mogła sobie po prostu siedzieć. Mm -hmm. 
to, right. to see Richard Ramirez. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you saw him? I saw him on Sunday. And um, where he's at now, um, he's not allowed visitors like the way he used to be allowed because there's too many problems. When you go there, what, what do you talk about? Mm, just everything. He doesn't act like <laughs> somebody who's in so much trouble. Well, I, I'd say that's an understatement to say so much trouble. You know, I, I, I look at you and I think, I remember I had just moved to Los Angeles in the, in the mid-'80s when the, the Night Stalker terror was going on, and I, I boarded up my windows and, and... Well, I lived in New Jersey when it all happened, so there, there was absolutely nothing on the news about him at all, and even now, hardly anybody there knows who he is or what happens, and the only time I heard about it was when he told me, and all he said was he didn't do anything, and now only... I've heard, you know, from the media and other people what happened. And now, he, he just, told you he did not commit the murders? Right. He swears up and down he didn't do anything. That's what he tells me. Well, he is obviously, as you know, a, a convicted killer. Right, but he has an appeal coming up, and he has another trial coming up. And one of the jurors who convicted him is now, she goes to visit him also twice a week, and she even sleeps in her car all night long, so she makes sure she gets a visit with him. And she says she doesn't think he did it, and she feels that she was pushed into it into convicting him. Now, he tells you he's innocent. Mm hmm And you believe him. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your, what's your attraction to this man who has this notoriety, who society and the jury, the, the judicial system says, you, you are guilty, we've, we've put him away. But you saw him and you felt sorry for him. Right. What was it? Was it a look in his eyes? Was mm, yeah. But um, I don't know. I just felt sorry for him being there. You know, there have been a lot of women that say they're in love with Richard Ramirez. You're intended. Well, there's been a few, and then they make it sound like that. But they're all like, the ones that have come up there to see him have been, like I said, the juror. And she's like 20 years older than him. And like I said, she sleeps in her car all night to make sure she gets a visit. And she's the only one that does that. And I don't know what she's trying to do. Well, he's become so much of a celebrity. I have a letter, if I may, Christine, from Richard Ramirez to you. There's been a lot of correspondence, of course. There's been some incredible artwork mm -hmm. uh, that he is, has given to you and some cards, some love letters. Mm -hmm. um, and you see one of them there. I mean, look at, look at this. Now, see that kind of an image. What, what does that say to you? That somebody who's in prison and has a lot of time to do a lot of drawings. <laughs> I just want to read uh, something that he wrote to her. He calls her Chris. Dear Chris, I've fallen madly in love with you. Send me pictures of you. And Kenny and Steve, these are your children. Um, yeah. So he, he goes on to talk about various other things, and he says, stay strong and be happy. Stay strong, meaning until you can be together? Um, I guess so, yeah, because like I said, where he's at now, he's not allowed, he was allowed to use the phone and do a lot more things, and now he's not allowed to. But you want to, why, why, why do you want to marry him? Why not just have this relationship? Mm, well, I don't know. It was his idea to get married. Well, I mean, right now, obviously, without conjugal visits, you cannot have physical contact with him, sexual contact. No, it, it's just, um, I didn't like him because he was in prison or something. I just, I don't know. I just felt sorry for him. I don't know why. So the idea of, 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 of having sex with a man who, it was said during the trial, basically would, would go into a home, kill the husband, and rape well, and sodomize they, the wife. Like I said, the juror keeps coming up there all the time saying she thinks he didn't do it. And like I said, he's got another trial coming up, and he has an appeal. So I'm going to watch that, and then I'll see what I think about the whole thing. Uh, Christine, if I could start off this segment with you. You said before that Richard Ramirez has told you that he did not commit the murders. He said he's innocent, and, and you believe him. I just wonder if, what if he had admitted to having done it? Would that make a difference to you? Would you then not, no longer be interested in marrying him? Right. I, I wouldn't, um, like you said, I just feel sorry for him, and the juror is there saying, I mean, she's there all the time saying she doesn't think he did it, so I don't know. Yes, I'd like to ask Christine, uh, why did you select Ramirez? I mean, are you on the rebound from somebody, a relationship? Well, <laughs> Yeah, that would be a pretty no, far I, had, I had just gotten divorced, and, um, so. <laughs> okay, I understand now. Oh, now you get it. Now you get it. All right. You know, I should say Christine does have two young children. Now, has, has Richard Ramirez met them? Do you allow your children to have contact with him? Um, no, they don't go up there. Mm -mm. 
they don't go to San Quentin with you. Mm -hmm. And and let's say that that really the impossible happened, that he was released, that they say, you know, he didn't commit the murders, we're going to let Richard Ramirez out, you do get married. What do you think your your life would, would be like? Well, I have to see the trial for myself to decide what I think then, because when they had the other trial, I wasn't here. People are asking about uh, your father's, your relationship with your dad's. Christine? I wasn't planning on killing anyone either. Everything was fine. All the people that, like I said, visit the men in prison more feel sorry for them. They don't feel like going out and killing someone. They more feel sorry for them. But everybody also feels sorry for the victims, too. It's not like, you know, not like anyone's saying they did a good job or anything. Everybody feels sorry for them as people, but the victims also. So... <laughs> Ramirez has become very much a celebrity. There have been groupies, there have been women before you who have really fallen, thrown themselves at him. Just a juror. How, but how do you feel? How do you feel about that? I mean, he seems to kind of enjoy it all. Um, He's well, like a rock star now. Lately, they've had a lot on TV about serial killers, and. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not the one that's putting it all on. It seems like all these shows are, yeah, it's you know, exaggerating. Yeah, all these shows are exaggerating everything and blowing it out of proportion about serial killers. Well, I mean, you know, you take 13 brutal deaths. I don't really know how much more out of proportion you can can go on that. No, I mean about them, you know, making up cards about them and magazines about them and all. Now, you guys have sort of negotiated for a, a lot of this publicity, have you not? Um, well, what happened was one day I went up to see him, this was three years ago, and somebody from the media was there from USA Today, and they took a picture of me, and then they stuck it on, like, the front page or the second page of the newspaper. In fact, it was on the second page of that paper, and it was on the front page of all the papers in California, and the day after that, my phone was ringing off the hook from every single talk show, every single news show, every single tabloid show, and it's three years now, and I get it. Two, usually two shows a month for the past three years. How much money would you say you've made basically off of the Night Stalker? Well, he... Mm, mm, well, I didn't make it totally off him. Like I said, I've been visiting him all the time. And when I first started visiting him, I thought it would just keep quiet. I didn't know that all this was going to happen. And Our fascination with your fascination. So, I mean, right. $100,000? I don't... I didn't... I'm not exactly sure... <laughs> well, that's part of You say you think he's innocent and that you, your heart went out to him, you felt sorry for him, but what would you say are, are the good qualities of Richard Ramirez? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, you love, no, you love him, you plan that, to no, marry all him. What's happened is that from him being on all these shows, especially the past few years, and then making cards of him and books of him, now he, he thinks like he's something like... <laughs> like you said, like a rock star. And now, like, he's, he acts different than he acted four years ago. So. You've seen a change. Are you ever scared around him? No, because there's always guards around all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and what about your other relationships? I mean, you know, you do have these two kids to think about. I mean, you know, you would think that you would look for someone who would be father material and to, to build a realistic family with. Um, I don't, I'm not really looking for anyone now i don't i was married and i didn't like being married i didn't i don't like it like i don't know <laughs> is part of the attraction for you to having uh, a lover in jail that you only have to see him when you want to see him yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, are you too afraid when they get out that you guys might be a victim of killing or no you guys might no i don't that? believe so no no you just believe that when they get out that you guys just the one and only and nothing's going to happen to you. Richard's not. Yeah. His chances of getting out aren't that high, so. Your infatuation that they are celebrities? I don't I don't believe so. No, Christine? No, because when I first started seeing him, this, this all was like the tabloid shows wasn't going on or anything, and I thought it would just be quiet. And then, like I said, all of a sudden one day they got a picture of me, and then it was just like, it's been, for the past three years, it's like I said, my phone's been ringing off the hook from all these TV shows and everything. And what I wanted to ask Christine is, you said you make money off these shows? I didn't say that. Okay, well, you were asked if you made a certain figure. Anyways, what I want to know is, does Richard, do you give Richard X amount of dollars for going on here and telling your so-called story? No. no. Okay, down here. Stand up, please, ma'am. All right, Christine, don't you have children? 
Do I have children? Yeah, I have children. Two children? And I wouldn't let them see those cards. But you'll date the you man who murdered the people? He, he, my sons don't know him. They don't know about that. They're little. The one what if you what if you marry him? You say whether he's out or not. You plan to marry him next October. How do you tell them who your husband is? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know, healthy people are not attracted to unhealthy people. That is real true, and, and it's real sad for you guys. I'm very grateful that I'm not you today, and I'm not perfect. I've got problems, but... Uh, so you feel like that uh, Celia and Christine are sick? They need some outside. They need some help. If that's mm -hmm. their... What do you guys think? Well, yeah. <laughs> Where's the... If uh, the phone stops ringing and the media doesn't knock on your door anymore, are you going to stay with old Richard boy? Listen, I was seeing him before any of this started. I just got a comment, you know, it seem, seems like these ladies kind of misdirect, you know, trying to go in after these cats, because even when they get out of jail, man, who the heck want to hire them? I wouldn't let them wash my LTD. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're, they're very unhealthy men, and you women, as far as your self-esteem, I think it's very low, and I think you need to look at yourselves. We have looked at ourselves. You, you, you don't know at her. You and the blonde lady over there that's wearing the man's boots don't know everything about us or what's going on that you don't see on the TV. That's you don't right. know everything that's going on. There's a lot that's more right. that you, you don't know. That's All right, right. We so don't go. We'll be right back. Shoot up your mouth. Well, our audience is no different than society as a whole. I mean, as a culture, we are fascinated by bad guys. This audience, as well as society in general, has overwhelmingly condemned the men that you love. And, and that's no secret to you. But you stand by your your heart. You love these guys no matter what. Yeah. Well, I don't know why they're so quick to tell us what to do because, like I said, they don't know everything. Yeah, like not I'm not sitting here not, telling yeah. her she needs to lose weight and get her teeth fixed. But I'm not like, you know, t standing up telling her that. You know, but since she's so quick to start telling me things when she doesn't know everything about me or what's going yeah, on, you, you people are only seeing a yeah, small part right. of us. You don't know everything. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't know. Do you ever kiss Richard? No. Never did? Mm-mm. He's behind the glass. You never had a contact visit mm -mm. with him? No. Mm-mm. Never? No. I heard differently. Am I wrong? Um, what happened was, well, he got in trouble with that, so he's not allowed to have contact visits. Oh, and you're not allowed to tell me that you touched him? <laughs> no. <laughs> I nie wiem, czy tak macie, ale ja mam coś takiego, że jak oglądam czy przesłuchanie, czy jakiś wywiad, to po prostu czasami aż się ciśnie na ustach jakieś pytanie zadać i, i nie pada to pytanie. I tutaj w tym przypadku było właśnie, no aż się samo ciśnie, bo skoro Krystyna twierdzi, że ona nic nie wiedziała o Richardzie, ona żyła w innym stanie, ona w ogóle nic tam nie było w wiadomościach, ani nigdzie, że on jest seryjnym mordecą, a ona w ogóle go nie znała. Tam, gdzie mieszka, w ogóle nikt go nie zna. No dobra, no to w, w, w takim razie skąd wiedziała, że on w ogóle istnieje, no? Jeżeli nic o nim nie słyszała, ani nie, nie widziała, ani w wiadomościach nic o nim nie mówiono, no to skąd, skąd go wynalazła? Teraz drugi program, w którym już występują dwie fanki, Richarda, Ewa i Christine. I tutaj widać taką znaczącą różnicę między nimi. Otóż Ewa dobrze wie, że Richard to zrobił, a wręcz w taki szokujący sposób usprawiedliwia jego zbrodnię. Natomiast Christine nadal utrzymuje, że mu wierzy, że jest niewinny, no ale jeszcze chce poczekać na proces, na apelację i wtedy przekona się ostatecznie, jaka jest prawda. Eva, you say you've gotten 30 letters from Richard Ramirez. How did this begin? Yeah. Well, um, I had a lot of friends who talked about him all the time. Why um, did they, what did they say about him all the time? Well, they, I know one person who um, had his artwork in a gallery, and um, Anton LaVey told me that he met, he met him one time and he didn't really get a chance to talk to him before he went to jail. And um, I wanted to do a report for school. That's how it started out. And I saw him on TV. It was on the news. He went to court. And I decided to call up San Quentin and see where I could write him. And uh, it took a while to get there because I put the wrong zip cut on it. But he ended up writing me back. And and um, I was I wrote I sent him a bunch of my poetry and and he sent me some back because I was trying to teach him how to do it right. And he sent me some drawings and I just find them interesting. Do you um, think he's handsome? Well, I see why other girls might. I don't really do, no. No? 
Mm -hmm. And what are you attracted to? Um, I think he broke away from the system. Mm -hmm. And he, I think he was fed up. Now, I have a quote from you. The world is overpopulated, so the murders really weren't such a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of explain that Those to Those old women were going to die soon anyways. What? They were going to die soon anyways. People are going to die soon, so the, why the not help The women he them? killed were. Okay. Um... <laughs> The murder where he, the most strange murder, what did he do in that? Um, that amazed me. Uh, I didn't hear about that until I was, after I was writing it for a while. And he didn't really want me to read all the articles about him because he, I think he didn't want me to find out about it. But I heard he broke into somebody's house and ripped out her eye and had sex with her eye. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, old, how old are you? 16. 16. You go to high school. You're at a high school where you study at home, I study. Right? My, I read and teach myself. Okay. Um, Christine, you've taken this interest or obsession one step further, have not you not? Not obsession. Okay. Not an obsession? No. Okay. He's the one that's always, he calls me all the time. He always writes to me all the time. All right. You say you're going to marry Richard Ramirez? We're supposed to. When I first uh, met him, it was four years ago, and when, the first time I met him, his attorneys were there, and they told me that he was innocent, and they told me to keep visiting him, that it was good for him, and that's what they were telling me. So that's why, mainly why I went near someone like him, because I came from another state, and I didn't know even what happened. I didn't even know why he was there. And um, I didn't even find out until a year later what even happened. And that story that she just said, I've never heard anything like that, and I've read all the reports, but that's what, what happened. <laughs> but well, you, that's what he, you well, feel... he deserves to get something like that from you for even writing back to you, so. What do you mean? But you feel... No, I'm what? telling the truth. Ladies, I, I know, you know the admiration has gone to no, the point of... No, I wasn't there when he killed people. Yeah. And I'm Either surprised he even wrote back to you. How do you feel about... Well, he's still writing Are you writing going me. to marry him? Um, yeah, we're supposed to get married. Are you in love with him? I don't know. Maybe I should tell you some you of the things know? he told me about you. Why well, are you <laughs> going to marry somebody you're not in love with? Because um, she gets to go on talk shows? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had to stop the tape. As you probably saw, a fight broke out in the studio between Christine and Eva. Just at the end, a few words <laughs> Christine. Postanowiłam dograć. Otóż no, trudno w sobie wzbudzić jakąkolwiek sympatię no, co do niej. No, nie tylko ze względu na jej komunikację niewerbalną, gdzie no, taka wydaje się w pierwszym materiale znudzona, nawet kiedy prowadząca ją przedstawia, to tak, tak do góry oczy mm, wznosi po prostu takim mało sympatycznym no, geściem. Poza tym, no, często odpowiada, a nie wiem, a coś tam, tak w ogóle jakby jej się nie chciało, jakby była właśnie, tak jak mówiłam, znudzona. Natomiast, no, drugim materiale, no, to już widać agresję z jej strony. Widać nawet po minie, że jest bardzo wkurzona. No, także, cóż, ale tak, no, po pierwsze, to była jej osobista decyzja, żeby zacząć występować w programach, więc no, trzeba za swoje decyzje brać odpowiedzialność. Widocznie ją to w pewien sposób przerosło, ale myślę, że jeszcze taki, co bym chciała jeszcze powiedzieć, to dwie rzeczy a propos właśnie relacji Christine i Ramireza. Otóż pierwsza, tak jak mówiła, on jej w listach tam pisał, że kocham Cię bardzo i tak dalej, i tak dalej. No, to jasno pokazuje, myślę, to jest idealny przykład tego, że słowa nic nie kosztują, słowo łatwo powiedzieć, no kocham Cię, no co to jest kocham Cię, powiedzieć, napisać, no żadnego wysiłku to nie kosztuje, a czy to jest prawda, no właśnie, różnie to bywa, dlatego no myślę, taki morał najważniejszy, żeby patrzeć na czyny, a nie na słowa, a druga kwestia, no tam była, Ciekawe było pytanie, jak dziennikarka w drugim materiale powiedziała jej, że ma obsesję na punkcie Richarda. No tej Christine stanowczo zaprzeczyła, że nie. 
Natomiast ta obsesja, bo obsesja jest właśnie tak, ma takie konotacje pejoratywne ogólnie, natomiast ja uważam, że obsesja jest również potencjałem. Można się zatrzymać w tej obsesji na, nie wiem, na właśnie darzeniu uczuciem kogoś, faceta na przykład, bo tak naprawdę nic z tego nie ma. Natomiast myślę, fajnym przykładem jest ta książka, którą polecałam, ta Row, ta dziennikarka, która miała w pewien sposób obsesję na punkcie właśnie tego Kendala François i ona zaczęła z nim korespondencję. No ona nie miała takiego zamysłu na samym początku, że ona z tego książkę zrobi, natomiast zobaczcie jak to jej fajnie później zaowocowało, że z tej obsesji na jego punkcie wydała książkę, zarobiła sobie jakby, wiecie, i to samo tworzenie tej książki, gdzie ona musiała to przemyśleć, wiecie, tą książkę całą napisać, no to, to też jest w, w pewien sposób jakieś tam, wiecie, no, do, y, szlifowanie własnego talentu. Y, dzięki temu też stała się sławna. Ta książka wyszła w, w, w tam, no nie wiem w ilu państwach, ale na pewno w kilku. Dlatego uważam, że warto właśnie taką obsesję, jeżeli ktoś ma taką skłonność do, do obsesji, to jest to jednak potencjał i warto się z tą obsesją właśnie ukierunkować na kwestie zawodowe. No. I po skryptum z obsesji, bo tak mi się przypomniało z dziedziny artystycznej, jest taka azjatycka artystka działająca w Stanach Zjednoczonych. Tu Wam właśnie dam jej zdjęcie i imię, nazwisko. Ona właśnie ze swojej obsesji czyniła atut. Otóż ona od dziecka miała obsesję na punkcie kropek. I ona te kropki zaczęła malować, rysować, umieszczać na obrazach. I w tym momencie z bardzo znaną artystką w Stanach Zjednoczonych. Ona po prostu z tego żyje. Nawet Louis Vuitton w jednej z ostatnich kolekcji jej obrazy na torebkach umieszczał, na klapkach, na butach, nawet na kurtkach. No i tam wiecie, na innych rzeczach. Natomiast no właśnie to jest taki przykład, jak z obsesji można właśnie podszlifować swój talent, swoją ścieżkę zawodową utorować i osiągnąć sukces tak naprawdę.